The Red Sox continue their dominance against the Oakland A's this season as they win on Wednesday night, not only due to the help from the offense, but also from a great start from Josh Winkowski. I want to welcome you to the Locked On Red Sox podcast. I am your host, Massachusetts Pirates team insider, Jake Ignazuski, and I'll be Ryan Solo today, but I want to thank you so much for making Locked On Red Sox your first listen of every single day. And I'll not only be talking about this great win that the Red Sox had on Wednesday night, but I'll also be looking into Thursday's game and what the Red Sox need to do in order to sweep the Oakland A's. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Red Sox, your daily Boston Red Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Sports Cards Investor. Download the Sports Cards Investor app today and easily browse over 630,000 cards from every sport with hundreds more added each week. It's available for free in the Google Play and Apple app stores or go to sportscardsinvestor.com backslash locked on. So as I mentioned in the opening What a great overall win from this Red Sox team. And what an incredible start from rookie Josh Winkowski. Doesn't matter if the Red Sox are lacking in starting pitching depth. No problem. Thank God Heim Bloom is a genius and has been able to build up that Red Sox farm system with some great pitching prospects like Cutter Crawford, Josh Winkowski, who came over from the Andrew Benintendi deal. Connor Seabold as well, even though, you know, he hasn't gotten his chance yet in this 2022 season, he's been really doing well down in AAA and could potentially come up uh, in a reinforcement role if the Red Sox need it when uh, their depth is lacking a little bit in that starting rotation due to Garrett Whitlock's and uh, Nathan Navaldi's injury. But looking at what Winkowski was able to do in his second career start in the majors, pitching five innings of scoreless baseball, only allowing four overall hits against this Oakland A's lineup, walking one batter and striking out three. And, you know, one thing that I noticed from this start out of anything is that Winkowski just looks so much more comfortable on the mound. And, you know, it makes sense. Obviously, in your major league debut, you're going to have a little bit of butterflies. This is something that you've always dreamed of throughout your entire life. This is what you've worked through worked for not only through college, through the minors, and uh, finally being able to get the opportunity like Josh Winkowski got, uh, you know, in May to be able to live out a long life dream uh, to be able to make his major league debut. Obviously, it didn't go uh, exactly how he expected. What's good is that uh, he was very honest and he had great self-awareness. You know, he mentioned after that start, He wished that he did better, and he has a lot of things to work on in Worcester. But, you know, it really was able to show how much more confidence uh, he had in his pitches during his second start. And uh, there's actually an interesting stat from both uh, Josh Winkowski and Cutter Crawford. They are the first pair of Red Sox rookies to make starts of five-plus shutout innings since 2015 when Eduardo Rodriguez and Henry Owens did it twice. I don't know about you. When I saw that tweet from Alex Spear, when I heard the name Henry Owens, I had to sift back in my brain and and remember who the heck that was. If you don't remember Henry Owens, he was a big Red Sox pitching prospect uh, back in, you know, 2015, 2016. It's kind of crazy because he was uh, thought of to be, you know, this incredible talent and uh, was said to have been you know, a a a, uh, a guy that we could see in this Red Sox rotation for years to come, a great pitcher. But unfortunately, things did not pan out in his career. And, uh, you know, something anytime I hear Henry Owens, all I think about is uh, when, you know, we saw the scenarios of the possibility of the Red Sox trading for Cole Hamels back in the day uh, and Henry Owens name coming up. Same with Blake Swihart. I remember that obviously did not end up happening, but I remember, you know, people in, in Red Sox nation were like, no, we got to keep those prospects. And you know, obviously ultimately didn't work out. Uh, but, you know, it was really nice to see 
uh, as I mentioned, Josh Winkowski, go out there, have a great start. It's really nice for this Red Sox team to have the type of depth that it has in guys like Cutter Crawford and Josh Winkowski who are able to make these spot starts and really be effective because you never really know, you know, with most guys uh, what they're really going to bring from the AAA level and how that's going to correlate to the majors and uh, being able to figure out that uh, different level of competition and also being able to figure out these major league hitters is, is never easy whatsoever. And uh, for a guy like Winkowski, who uh, was able to come up and do as well as he did on short notice, I mean, it was only announced yesterday uh, that he was going to make his start. And what's so funny is right after Lauren and I actually uh, recorded last uh, yesterday's episode, you know, we were talking about the possibility that Winkowski would start and then ultimately it got released. And, uh, you know, she told me that right after we finished uh, recording. We're like, oh, gee, you know, we, we we worked our magic. We predicted it in the moment. Uh, but, you know, obviously we, rele- we released it yesterday morning. And so, you know, you guys weren't able to uh, fully understand how we sort of worked our magic and made it happen for Josh Winkowski to start. But, you know, it was really nice to see him be as effective as he was and you know another guy who did get caught up as well in Jaron Duran led off for this Red Sox team and uh you know he it's been really nice to see how much more comfortable he's looked at at the plate uh, you know even though he did go 0 for 4 in this game did walk once struck out twice and scored a run um he just looks so much more comfortable at the plate. It's been really nice to see and you know a little bit of a sneak peek we could be having uh an interview with Jaron Duran coming very, very soon uh, on our uh, Farm Report segment. So so look very closely for that because uh, I had a great conversation with Jaron. But uh, looking at what else this offense was really able to do for this Red Sox team to help them put up 10 total runs. Uh, you know, we saw Alex Verdugo end up smacking three hits with a home run uh, and driving in four RBIs total. And he actually started off the score scoring by grounding out to drive in Devers. And, you know, talking about Devers, he's another guy who has continued to swing the bat so well, was able to homer in his fourth straight game. That's right. Four. It's pretty crazy. And he's only the uh, sixth Red Sox ever with multiple streaks of home runs in four plus straight games. The other Ted Williams, uh, Carl Yastrzemski, Jimmy Fox, Jim Rice. Uh, Williams did six times. Yaz did three times. Fox did three uh, and Rice did two. But great company for Devers to be in. But it's been so nice to see Devers continuing to swing the bat so hot. And, uh, you know, same with uh, Xander Bogarts as well. You know, it it really seems like uh, with with that 2-3-4, it's just, I believe it's the most dominant in baseball. You're not going to get a better 2-3-4 in this game and in this league. And, you know, really looking at what Bogey was able to do as well was 3-for-4 in this one. JD was uh, 1-for-3 and. Uh, same with uh, Jackie Bradley Jr. and Trevor Story had some great games. Story went two for four. Uh, Bradley went two for four as well. And uh, it's it's been really nice to see everybody in this Red Sox lineup really contributing to these wins. That's why you were able to see them get three total base hits. And that's what you got to do uh, w- when you want to win these types of ball games. I understand they're playing the Oakland A's, who are one of the worst teams in the entire league, but. You know, you got to win these games against bad teams if you want to be a playoff team. And uh, the Red Sox are definitely playing like a playoff team, having a lot of fun, playing with a lot of swagger. And we're really seeing sort of what we expected from this Red Sox team at the start of the season. And it's it's really nice to see how they've miraculously turned things around uh, in May and so far in June as well. But uh, I'm, I'm going to look into what the Red Sox need to do in this third and final game of this Oakland A's series at Fenway to be able to sweep uh, the A's and uh, be able to continue their winning streak of three games right now. And, you know, it'll it'll be so fun to see uh, if they're going to make that happen tomorrow with Rich Hill on the bump. But I just want to take a second to talk to you about sports cards investors. So whether you're just a casual card collector or you're looking for an exciting alternative investment opportunities, the free sports cards investor app has something for you. It's not only free, 
but you're easily able to browse over 630,000 cards from every sport with hundreds more added each and every single week. You can also check the latest values of your favorite cards with seven day or 30 day charts and find the best prices and buy directly through the app with our eBay deals feature. And something that's pretty crazy is they have breakout stars, prospects debuting. They also have some great old player cards as well. And uh, if you're interested in getting in sports cards and finding great deals on your favorite players, there's never a better time to start collecting with uh, and finding cards from your favorite players like Aaron Judge, Mike Trout. And with, and with the free sports cards investor app, you can see the latest values and find the great deals to build out a one of a kind collection. So download the sports card investor app today. It's available for free in the Google Play or App, Apple App Store or go to the sportscardsinvestor.com backslash locked on. And also, we have a very important favor to ask you. So we put together a survey so we can learn more about our listeners like you and make your favorite Locked On podcast even better. So this is the opportunity for you to tell us what you like and what you don't like about Locked On Podcasts. So go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey right now to get started. It won't even take very long. And everybody that completes a survey can qualify for a chance to win one of 10 $100 Ticketmaster gift cards to take our audience survey. So go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey. We greatly appreciate your help. So looking at this final and third game of this Oakland A's series, the Red Sox have the chance to be able to sweep this A's series. And as I mentioned in our last segment, continue their winning streak of three games. And looking at the pitching matchup, it's Paul Blackburn against Rich Hill. And interestingly enough, Blackburn actually pitched against Boston 11 days ago uh, in their series, as well as Hill also pitched against Oakland 10 days ago. So these teams have a lot of familiarity between each other. But really looking at how specifically Blackburn fared against this Red Sox offense, allowed seven hits, four earned runs, over four innings, walking two batters, and striking out three in you know, so the Red Sox will really look to continue their offensive success and look to take advantage of what worked for Blackburn and, and try and continue to uh, really uh, dock up that hit count, that hit count on them because it really seemed to work wonders for them uh, back on June fourth when when they faced them uh, before. And you know, looking at what Hill did as well against the A's. He was able to go out there and pitch six innings, only allowing three hits, one earned run, and striking out five. So. Well, if he's able to do something similar to that, also what he did against Seattle last uh, or his last start, uh, going four innings, only allowing five hits and striking out six, uh, he's going to have a great game. It's been really nice to see uh, Rich Hill doing a little bit better than what we saw him do uh, against the Orioles when he allowed six earned runs uh, back on May 30th. But, you know, if he's able to be able to spot his curveball, and also his fastball as well, because we, we've seen when he's left that up in the zone, he's really gotten burned on it. Uh, and guys are really able to hit that over the wall. So um, what he really needs to do is obviously keep his control on point, uh, be patient with batters, and um, find ways to get those easy outs like those ground balls or those flyouts, which with this A's lineup, it's not very difficult. They're not a very good lineup, to be honest. And so it's going to be really interesting to see how everything does play out in this third and final game. It is an afternoon game. I don't really think that will really play a factor whatsoever, but uh, a great matchup between Rich Hill and Paul Blackburn. The Red Sox just need to continue being patient at the plate and taking advantage with runners in scoring position. You know, that's really been their strength it seems like over the last few weeks with how good this offense has been playing so if they're able to continue to do that they're going to have a lot of success in this one and be able to sweep this Oakland A's series and continue this ride man it's been really nice to see this Red Sox team continue to you know really build off of uh, their great stretch that, that they've had and you know right now looking at it they're five games over 500 so they just got to keep on uh stacking up those wins and keep on creeping up on the Yankees at the top of the AL least division but going into our third and final segment of this episode of the Locked On Red Sox podcast 
I'm going to be doing a little bit of a mental health minute like we always do. Uh, but before I do that, I just want to take a second to talk to you about LinkedIn. So as the sun comes out and small businesses are back in business, LinkedIn Jobs makes it easier for you to grow your team. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find people that you want to interview faster and for free. You can create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. And then you add your job with the little purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you are hiring so that your network can help you find the right people to hire. They have great simple tools like screening questions that will make it easier for you to focus on candidates that have the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you would like to interview and hire. And that's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires for leading competitors. So LinkedIn Jobs helps you find candidates that you want to talk to faster and easier. And if you do this every week, there's nearly 400 million job seekers that visit LinkedIn. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MLB. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MLB to post your job for free. Terms and conditions may apply. And I also want to talk to you about Built Bar. So they have a brand new flavor in Mud Pie. And if your friends haven't tried Built yet, what are they doing? So, well, this time, Bill has truly outdone themselves with their new mud pie flavor. And this time, for the first time ever, Bill is introducing the new mud pie flavor in both mud pie bar and also mud pie puff. So, if you're not sure what mud pie tastes like, well, that's like a chocolate. If you're a chocolate fan, then you better sit down for this one. The new mud pie bar is rich with whipped cream and chocolate mousse smothered in 100% real chocolate and topped with cookies and cream crumble. Mm -mm -mm. And you've got to try the mud pie as soon as possible. You need to hurry because the mud pie bar and the mud pie puffs are only available for a limited time. So if you visit built.com to taste the new deliciousness yourself. So with like all built bars, uh, they're covered in 100% real chocolate and they taste and they're healthy for you and they taste also really good. So to go and check out the new Mud Pie Built Bar, go to built.com and use promo code LOCK15 and get 15% off of your order. That's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off your order at built.com. So lastly, as we've been ending it on our usual, I love this mental health minute to um, you know help you guys start your day right, uh, get motivated. So um you heard me talk a little bit about yesterday, how grateful I am to have this opportunity to speak about the Red Sox each and every single day. Um, and I, I'm so grateful to be able to have this podcast in my life. Um, interestingly enough, I, I, I didn't obviously always have this opportunity. And um, uh, graduating college, it was a little bit difficult for me to find jobs and um, got a little bit down on myself, had, had a little bit of a, a little bit of a low time. And uh I want to speak upon that, about how, you know, the low moments in your life can really help you learn about the most important and most valuable parts um, and lessons that you, that you need to learn to be able to make yourself a better person at the end of the day. And, um, you know, looking back on it, every every single low point that I've had in my life, um, I've really taken something valuable from it. But you really need to try and have the awareness during those low points. If you uh, are all loom and gloom and uh, you, poor me. And uh, you don't go at it um, in an open-minded mindset of trying to learn from what didn't go well and what's not going right and um, try and grow from a low point, then uh, you're just going to stay stagnant. And you you never want to stay stagnant in life. You're always trying to learn and grow and um, build. And, you know, I'm still very young, so I'm still trying to learn as much as I can in this life and um, try and find ways each and every single day to live it to the fullest. Because at the end of the day, you know, this life is a tipping, ticking time clock. We don't know when our journey is going to end. And so we got to try and do our best to live each and every single minute, second and day, uh, like it's our last. And, um, if you're at a low point right now, um, the best advice that I can give you is, uh, really try and figure out what you're grateful for and what you can find positive, uh, in your life right now. Cause there has to be something you got to be wearing shoes. You got to have you know, 10 fingers, 10 toes, you got to have eyes, you got to be able to talk, you got to be able to hear. 
Uh, you got to have a great family. You got to have a car. You got to have a job. You know what I mean? There has to be something that you can be grateful for, even if it's something super, super small. And um, it's all about your perspective. It's all about your perspective on on different things. And, um, you know, obviously that's created through our adolescence. That's created through our experiences. But um, being able to remember also that everything happens for a reason, that this low point isn't going to last forever. And uh, at the end of the day, when you look back at this low point, it, it's going to be a great lo- learning and growing experience for you. And um, I think that's the best advice that I can give. And, um, uh, you know, Lauren and I have said with, with these mental health minutes, you know, if you're ever going through a rough time, if you ever need somebody to talk to, um, our DMs on Twitter are always open. My DMs on Instagram are always open. If you ever need somebody to talk to, we're always here for you. Um, at the end of the day, we're all in this, in this life together. Uh, You know, we're on this journey together. We're all trying to figure out what the heck this is, what the heck this life is and uh, how we can be happy and live to the fullest. But as always, greatly appreciate everybody tuning in. Um, If you have not yet, make sure to follow Locked On Red Sox on Twitter. It's LO underscore Red Sox. Follow myself. It's at Jake Iggy. Follow my co-host Lauren. It's La La La. Lauren with four R's. And we greatly appreciate everybody making Locked On Red Sox their first listen of every single day. But I just want to take a second to talk to you about the Ultimate NBA Mock Draft. So the first picks of the Ultimate NBA Mock Draft have been made. So search now for Ultimate NBA Mock Draft and go and get our 50 insiders, the Odyssey sports experts, and the draft experts of the Locked On NBA board the five episodes of the Ultimate NBA Draft is underway, so make the Ultimate NBA Draft your second listen today. Go and check that out. They do a great job over there. It's definitely going to be a great listen to help you get ready for this up-and-coming NBA Draft. But as always, greatly appreciate everybody tuning in. Hope everybody has a great rest of their day. And we'll end it how we always end it. Let's go socks. Peace.